What's up guys, Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. On this episode, I'm gonna show you what to expect working with myself, America's Canine Educator, at the Upstate Canine Academy on a first session um, training here. And so this session is with a young boxer. She's about a year and change. Um, and she's exhibiting behaviors that most of you out there are dealing with. Jumping on people, pulling at the leash. Um, we didn't expect to film this. We just popped it on because the camera was ready to roll. I threw on my equipment and there we were. And so I just wanted to put this video together to show people how we do things here at the Upstate Canine Academy, what to expect when you're here working with myself, my staff, um, or when I'm on the road, um, you know, traveling, what to expect working with me. I really, really focus on relationship building and communication, as you can see in the video. And so this is a young boxer coming in. I haven't touched the dog. I haven't met the, the, the owner before. Um, so they came in. We did a consultation. We started training immediately. And I just want to show you um, how training should be um, in my eyes as far as, you know, less stress, more education, uh, more lecture. Um, there's just met, there's so many people out there that are great with dogs, but it's really, really important to extend that to the owner. And at the end of this video, I don't put the owner on the film just for respect issues and, you know, it's her first session. But um, at the end of the episode, she was able to walk out of here with, with no issues at all. When she came in, as you see in the video, she was pulling her way in and um, it's a little bit, bit chaotic. And so this is what to expect working with myself here at the Upstate Canine Academy for your first session. And I hope this helps any of you dealing with, you know, the majority of people at home probably do deal with this jumping and, and, and pulling on the leash and lack of communication. You say no, the dog says I don't care. Um, and so I hope this helps uh, anybody at home. And we flicked on the camera and it actually came out uh, beautifully, I think. So enjoy this video. If you have any questions, just um, put them below in the comments and we'll talk to you later. Again, you have to understand how to say yes and no to the dog first before you can then A, teach him new things, and B, reward him. Because even, even know that some dogs don't even know like when you're rewarding them because we don't cue it. We're just like, oh, good job, you're doing good. And they're like, well, this means get crazy. But it's, it's like not structured, right? So like if you were like, oh, hey, like good job, and you freak out and you talk high pitch and you're getting really excited, the dog doesn't understand that that's like, oh, I did good. That just means, okay, now we're getting crazy together. And so you even need to learn how to like tell your dog good or like you did good before you can tell them like anything else. And so that's why it's important. The underlying um, like leash pressure, the foundation work of a, of a dog with, with no communication skills is really crucial. You got to make sure you do it right because then everything else is easy. If you can teach your dog yes and no, then you can teach your dog anything else. It's the problem that we go from like, like say we go from like kindergarten and then all of a sudden we want to be in high school with the dog. We're like, okay, they learned sit. Now you're going to stay across this field. It's like they don't, they don't know how to get from step A to step B or C or D, etc. So you have to do the foundations first instead of like skimping everything out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. That's me. Mm -hmm. She can sit. That's that. Right, right. And so the foundation work is like, I don't know. But if you can communicate and say, hey, yes, that's good. Hey, no, that's bad. Then you can start structuring your dog of like everything else. And so with her, you have to make sure um, that she understands like, yes, good girl or good girl or okay or whatever you want to use. It doesn't matter. Or you could say spaghetti and it, as long as you mark it right. Um, and the same thing with no, like no. And so I'm going to introduce the leash pressure um, to her, and I'm going to walk around, and I'm just going to show you how I'm going to be doing it. If somebody coming in with Panera, then we all rush the door. <laughs> but the session, ends. the session ends and we eat, but no. So when you have a, like that's a high stimulation for the dog, right? New person, food, potentially, she's probably smelling the food. So you have to understand that, like, you have to grasp that attention from the dog 
and then reward the dog for coming with you. Okay? Roxy, come. Pressure. Yes, good girl. Good. So she doesn't know what yes means yet, but I'm going to start using it. So pressure. Come. Ah, ah. Good. And so this is the first time I've worked with her. This is the first time I've met both of you, and this is the first time that I've ever touched her. And so by the way I do leash pressure, when I'm walking, right, so I don't want my dog to be here. I want my dog to be here. So if she does something I don't like, like run past me, I'm going to apply pressure. Okay? Same thing. Come. Come. Good girl. Yes, good girl. And she's excited. And so her payment is the lack of pressure. So leash pressure, if she doesn't do what I ask, she's getting applied pressure to her. The moment or the minute she does do what I ask, the pressure ends. So we don't always have to layer on like a ton of um, like food and like freak outs. Like you can just say, yeah, good girl. And that's just as good. So it's a good question. And so when I correct a dog or I tell a dog no, bad, I'm just flicking my wrist with my pinky and my ring finger. I'm just flicking my wrist. Okay, so when I move forward, ah, ah, I turn. Ah, ah, good. So she did exactly what I asked. I didn't correct her for it. So a lot of people that I work with make the mistake of they think every time that they stop, or do something with the dog, they have to correct the dog. You only have to correct the dog if they don't do what you ask. You're actually using the correction to shape the behavior you want. Right? So you don't always have to use the corrections. It's just you're forming the dog and shaping the dog to what the behavior you want. Come. Ah. Right? So I move forward. Come. Ah. Roxy, come. come. I'm not yet. But if I do... <laughs> I'm not moving my wrist yet, but if I need to, I'm, I'm, I'm only flicking my wrist. Ah, pop. Okay, forward. Ah. Come. Ah, ah. Come. Ah. Come. Ah, ah. Good girl. Good. 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 So see how calm she is? Right? It's amazing, but it's easy. And when I say easy, is if you have the experience, like the experience, experience, knowledge on like how dogs react when you can, when you can hone yourself in and zone yourself in on a really good energy and like this is what dogs like. Like I'm, I'm not even talking. I haven't even said anything to her really, but I'm talking to her through a language that she understands, which is body language, and that's important. Rex, come. Come. Good girl. Good girl. And she's a little wiggle butt. She's just super excited. So I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to stop and go. Ah. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Right. So my little verbal cue, ah, ah. My little verbal cue that I'm doing is a, a conditioning method that I use, and I use it for most dogs. And so what I'm saying is, is I'm, it's almost like a warning shot. I'm like, hey, I'm doing something. I'm stopping. Ah-ah. No. It's like when your kids are like doing something wrong, and you're like, one, two, and they're like, bing, right? Like, two and a half. Two and, a half, two and, three, two and three quarters. Right, 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 exactly. So when you do that, you're like, if you don't comply, there's going to be a consequence. No video games, no, app, no laptops, no iPads, whatever, right? There's always a consequence for that. Same thing with the dog. So you're using a verbal cue or a verbal marker to tell the dog, hey, 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 doing something, move forward. Ah, ah. If she were to walk past, pop. Okay? Come. Good girl. So there's a lot going on, and she's still, ah, ah, ah. Good girl. So there's a lot going on, and she's still being very, very obedient. Yes, she is. Which I like, um, because of her age. I mean, she's 
She's over a year old boxer with a ton of energy that's like, which is nice. Yeah, you come on. Good girl. Good girl. So again, I'm just going to use my verbal cues and I want to just show you ah, that you don't have to, like once you correct your dog a couple times, it's over. If you do it right. Many people make the mistake of wham, 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 ah, ah, and you're, you're correcting. So the dog can never win. Because if you're, if you're reprimanding the dog each time, no matter what they do, they're going to become so frustrated because they can never win. They can never escape the correction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when you move forward, ah, good. But then if I move forward and, and did my ah, and then, and then corrected her, she'd be like, whoa, what gives? You're correcting me for doing everything you asked. I can never win. This is frustrating. And then the dog goes nuts. So people don't make that registry of like, well, every time you stop, you should correct the dog. Like, no. Every time you stop, you should give the dog an opportunity to make the right decision, no matter what you're doing. And I always use verbal markers to cue that, like, ding, ding, we're doing something, you know? Like, when, you, when, you, like, when you're going up in an elevator and the light goes off, right when that light goes off, the doors are going to open. Like, you know that. That's the cue. Same thing with this. Like, if I'm like, ah. Because, like, chances are, if I was doing something on my phone and I lived in an apartment complex in New York City and I, I was on that sucker five times a day, ding, ding, I'd walk right into the door if it didn't open, right? Because right. it's letting me know, like, hey, this is what's happening and here's the, here's the response. People are going to shove through that door. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So when you're doing your verbal cues or markers, you have to make sure um, that you're not correcting the dog for doing something right. Then they get confused, and then you don't progress the way you need to. So I'm going to do this one more time. Come, ah, ah, sit, sit. Good. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Okay, great. Come on. Do is verbal markers, and then without verbal markers. And I want you to see, you know, how she reacts, because the dog will condition itself on me, entirely of what I provide to the dog. Okay. So we're going to move forward. Come. Ah. Good. Come. Ah, ah. I made it hard on her. Move forward really quick. Ah, ah. Sit. Good. So I corrected at the same time as she was sitting. So that's a mistake on my part. Because she started to sit and I corrected her anyway. But that's my mistake, not hers. Come. So now we're going to do it again with zero verbalization and just body pressure and body language. And again, this is the first time I've ever handled the dog. And so it's teaching you how good she actually is and how potential, the potential she has. Distractions. So I always touch a dog before I move forward to let him know like, hey, remember me? Let's move forward. Good. Pet. Forward. So that's too far for me. I don't like that. Move forward again. Now I'm going to ah, ah, pop. Now watch. Ah. Body pressure sit. Okay. I pressured her into a sit just through my body. So I didn't say anything. Move again. Body pressure sit. Good girl. Okay, break. Good girl. Good. See how engaged she is with me? But I'm not saying anything, right? Good girl. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Okay, come on. Ah. Uh. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Ah, uh. So that's without any pressure. question. So your marker, she jumps up, correction down. Okay. Good girl. You get her excited. Come on. Let's go. Come on, Roxy. Good girl. No. So I want her to work with me, but not jump. Come. Good girl. Good girl. No. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. No. Good girl. See the hesitation? Good girl, good girl, 
Good girl. Yes, good girl. Come on. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, let's go. Ah. Okay, come on. Good girl. Good girl. Always a good girl. Always a good girl. So you see that? It's all off what I'm giving back to the dog. And it's not, you have to understand communication before you can do anything else. And then if you do that, your relationship with your dog will be strengthened. Your foundation will be really, really good. Because you're, you're understanding each other. It's like a bad relationship. If you're like, I don't know this. I don't know that. And I'm wondering about this. And I'm kind of wondering about that. I'm worried about this. I'm frustrated about that. It's not good, right? That's like a bad relationship. Right. But if you have a great relationship, you're clear on everything. Right? Yeah. So, um, real quick, I want to run down um, when you asked about the jump. Kind of like was coaxing her to like, yeah, jump on me. And she didn't, so it's proofing. So my marker, she jumped up, no, correction. Jumped up, no, correction. And then after that, she didn't jump, right, correct? Right. Right, so same thing with anything else. Like if I were to come over and hit your leg and say no five times, just slap your leg, no, 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 no. And the sixth time, no, what are you going to do? You're going to go, oh, right, you're going to anticipate that negative consequence or for whatever reason right does that make right. sense yeah so my verbal marker is always followed by a consequence we understand it's a consequence they kind of do kind of don't but they know that no means right so jump up no boom jump up no boom they're like oh i hate that and they do it again you're like no they're like oh and they get away from it and then the important part about that is is Positive reinforcement at, after negative reinforcement creates a balanced dog. So no, 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 no. And then once they're like, I want to, but I'm not, then, oh, good girl. Good girl. Okay? Makes sense, right? Yeah. You're just like, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. 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 So, so if this video was helpful to you or do you think it would be helpful to your friends or family, please share it with them. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel below. You can work with me, America's Canine Educator, online at www.americascanineeducator.com listed below. You can join my online uh, portal, work with me every single day and travel with me, uh, grow your dog business, work at Wolf Sanctuaries, Mo most importantly, fix your dog problems. I've had a huge success rate online by FaceTiming people and it's been super, it's just been incredible. I, I honestly didn't know how, how it would work at first and I gotta tell you, it's, it's, just as e it's just as easy to train a person how to train their dog via FaceTime and help them out through video. So thank you guys so much for your valuable time. Don't, don't, don't forget, every single Monday I'm going to be doing this um, on my YouTube channel. So you keep asking questions and I'll keep answering them.